My assignment is to briefly talk about postmenopausal hormone therapy and the risk for cardiovascular disease. Before I present the clinical case scenario, let's refresh our memory on the history relevant to this issue. These are the coronary data from the Nurses Health Study, which started in 1976 and recruited more than 120,000 women who were relatively young, up to age 55 at baseline. Reassessment 20 years after initiation of the study showed that prolonged hormone use was associated with a 46% reduction in coronary heart disease events. Sorry. Even past use had a significant beneficial effect. Based on this study and many others, it was believed in the USA that there is a reason to recommend on hormone treatment solely for the prevention of coronary artery disease. It was just natural that guidelines written 15 to 20 years ago were definitely positive about hormone therapy. These were the guidelines of the American College of Physicians in 1992. They said that all women, I bring it back to you, all women should consider hormone therapy and women with coronary artery disease or are at risk for coronary artery disease are likely to benefit from hormone therapy. The turning point occurred in 2002 when preliminary results from the Women's Health Initiative WHI, a large randomized study, were published. In a nutshell, the conclusions were that combined hormone therapy, estrogen plus progestin, increased the risk of coronary heart disease, stroke, venous thromboembolism, and breast cancer. This was a real shock, and the medical community, as well as the consumers, moved away from this therapy. So, based on this background, here's my first case history. It's very typical for menopause clinics. A 50-year-old woman suffers from hot flashes, sweats, irritability, disturbed sleep, bleeds stopped a year ago. She knows about hormone therapy, but was told that the enthusiasm about the benefits of treatment was downgraded substantially because of data pointing at increased risk for coronary heart disease and breast cancer. Her physician did not favor hormone therapy as well, based on the results of the WHI study. At this point, we must address some critical issues. The WHI hormone trial was well designed to assess the questions it set out to answer, namely, the effects of regimens being used in 1993 when the study was planned on the incidence of major chronic diseases in older postmenopausal women. It was not designed to test the effects of hormone therapy in recently menopausal women and did not have statistical power to do that. A major failing of the study has been the generalization of the results in older menopausal women to younger menopausal women. Furthermore, as I already showed, the initial publication of the preliminary results in 2002 pointed at a 29% increased risk of coronary artery disease for estrogen plus progestin users, and the confidence interval did not include one which means it was statistically significant if we refer to the nominal figure. Please pay attention to the fact that the adjusted confidence interval did include one and therefore was not significant. 
the 2003 final analysis of the same results, the nominal hazard ratio and confidence intervals were slightly different, but not significant anymore because confidence interval now included one. Another set of figures was presented in the 2007 publication, again, not significant. As for the estrogen arm, estrogen alone arm, the results were not significant at all. The second major point is the distribution of the WHI data by age groups. Both arms of the WHI study showed a graded increase in coronary heart disease risk with age and with years since menopause. In the estrogen plus progestin arm, significant risk was found only for those women in whom hormones were initiated at least 20 years after entering menopause or after age 70. It may be assumed, of course, that these women had already some degree of established atherosclerosis at baseline. Younger women did not demonstrate any coronary risk. In the estrogen alone arm, the same time trend was recorded, but there was no increased risk for coronary events at any age. In fact, for the young age group, less than 10 years in menopause, there was a non-significant decrease in the number of cardiac events. The WHI study provided another clue <clears throat> to the importance of the age factor. Coronary CT data pointed at the favorable effect of hormone therapy in the 50 to 59 years old who received estrogen alone. The coronary artery calcium scores after the termination of the clinical trial were significantly lower in the estrogen users when compared to those who were in the placebo group. Thus, this effect translates into lesser cardiovascular clinical events? Indeed, it does so. Several sub-analyses of the estrogen alone data according to age group did show statistical significance versus placebo for the age group 50 to 59. There were less coronary intervention of all sorts, less myocardial infarctions and coronary death in the estrogen users. This was not found, however, in the older age group. Other studies reaffirmed this observation. On the screen are data from the Scandinavian DOPS study, women who started hormone therapy early after menopause and continued to use it for long term, demonstrated a 52% reduction in composite endpoints, including all-cause mortality, myocardial infarction, and heart failure compared with non-users during a 10-year follow-up period. Another recent study from Scandinavia, which examined the effects of hormone use on cardiovascular mortality, analyzed the data by years of exposure to therapy it showed that the risk for coronary heart disease was significantly reduced by up to 54% in hormone users and was well correlated with years of exposure to therapy. The more years of use, the more reduction in risk of dying. Here are two recent studies. I will not get into details, the ELITE study and the KIPS study, and both of them, in healthy women, both of these studies did not raise any coronary artery disease safety signals. So, the 2015 NICE guidelines on menopause stated that taking hormone therapy under the age of 60 does not increase a woman's risk 
for cardiovascular disease. The presence of cardiovascular risk factors is not a contraindication to hormone therapy. <clears throat> this was uh, published by our society, the International Menos uh, Menopause Society, and uh, you can read it. It says that strong evidence that standard dose estrogen alone menopausal hormone therapy decreases coronary disease and all-cause mortality in women <clears throat> younger than 60 years of age and within 10 years of menopause. I have two, two slides that I'm finishing. <clears throat> perhaps, <clears throat> perhaps we are returning back to square one, as suggested by this uh, um, review by Manson, Russo. They were the investigators of uh, the WHI study, and they actually now say that they were wrong in interpreting the results of the WHI study. So maybe this is a full circle back to the 90s. The available literature suggests that hormone therapy is a viable option for the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease in postmenopausal women. Although these authors, Marco et al., and it was published just a month ago in menopause, they were a little bit cautious about it. But again, people talk about the possibility that in young, healthy women, hormone therapy might prevent coronary disease. So ladies and gentlemen, <clears throat> with this I finish my presentation and I hope that you understand that hormone therapy in young and healthy postmenopausal population is not associated with increased cardiovascular risks and actually the decision whether or not to prescribe hormones should not take into account any cardiovascular perspectives. Thank you. <clears throat>